Hello, 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 everyone. I wanted to give a quick and brief overview of how to think about very complicated kind of computer things in Redstone and kind of the basic of logic gates. This is sort of how I think about it, and it might not work for everyone else, but this is the building blocks, I think, in how to build more complicated things because ultimately, any complicated Redstone thing is just the sum of its parts and the most simple way to start with the sum of its parts is to start with the most binary logic system that you can now this may not look like much to anyone that's because it is not much and the point is is that it's actually very simple so what we have here is four lines going this way and four lines going this way now each one of these lines can be coded to mean a separate thing for example Let's say I wanted to make this a way to select ingredients for a potion, for a potion um, just like automaker or something like that. All I would need to do is trigger a specific input and then the ingredients would be selected based off of each one of these and voila, we have an ingredient selected. Now if you see where I'm going with this, that means that you basically already understand redstone. So real quick, I'm going to assign each one of these top layers a value. So each one of these lines has now been assigned a specific ingredient that it's associated with. So what we're going to do now is figure out a way to program these lines. So notice the ingredients that I chose first off. So if the first ingredient is nether warp, which is basically used in everything, then three base ingredients. I'm calling them base ingredients because they're the things that make. So this will create night vision, this will create health, and then this will create fire resistance. And basically I want each one of these lines to be associated with a different potion. So for this first line, let's make it associated with, let's do night vision. The next one we can have it associated with health. And the next one we'll have it associated with fire resistance. Very simple. Now I haven't actually done anything, I've just placed placeholder blocks. Now the next thing to do is to actually connect these wires. So the way that I'm thinking about making this work, let's time set day. So the way I'm thinking of this, having this working maybe is having droppers at the end of this and they'll be triggered. But for now we're just going to use redstone lamps. Here we have four redstone lamps. Now, the next part of this is starting to do the wiring. So let's put redstone on the top here, redstone on the top of all of these, and then the lamps so that we know how the input is triggered. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a repeater at each block. Let's just start with this first one. Now the next step is to just wire this up too. Now we don't really need the redstone that's over there, but maybe we'll need it in the future, so I'm just going to put it there for why not see's kind of value. Now, when I press this button, literally nothing happens. All that happened is this redstone line lit up. Now the next part is connecting it. So the way that I would connect that these, these signals together is by removing the blocks that are underneath. Now if we add redstone to this, the two that we want light up. Now, let's just continue. Assume that this is all working properly. And it's not actually, but we're just gonna assume that it is. So put wire there and follow the same protocol. All right, now when we press these two buttons, what? Three lamps are lighting up. Now, what you wanna be most careful for in your logic circuit, this is kind of a little bit of a side note, is that you don't want cross references. So when I've triggered this first one, it's going up the line, triggering down here, and triggering this light, and vice versa. So make sure that these are all looking in a straight line. There you go. Now that they're all in a straight line, each one should correspond properly. Yep, those two. Yep, those two. All right. 
So it's already looking pretty complicated, but you see in essence it's actually really fairly simple. Now we'll continue this for this next one. All right, there we are. Now when we push this, it will trigger that one and that one. Kaboom. So now you see you have like a little logic gate set up. And the thing is that this is infinitely scalable. So what I'm gonna do next is I can either add more potions along to the side, I can, or more ingredients along to the side, or I can add more ingredients. So if I was wanting to do a modifier, so I've now added the three modifiers to potions. So extension, increase in strength, and then, or potency, if that's the word, potency, and then a splash potion. So these are the three modifier potions. So now, if we wanted to modify one of our pre-existing potions, all we have to do is say, this currently is our health potion, I mean our night vision potion. We want night vision for longer, all right, and we want it exploding. All right, there we go. Boom, just keep the redstone line going, except for right here where we put our repeaters and our repeater right here. Stick that there. And then we don't really need one on the end because there's nowhere else for it to go. Put lines along the top of these. And we shall see that this light, this light, then this light, and that light will light up, ideally. There we go. So this is kind of like the basic way that we can think about logic gates. Now if we now if we look, it's actually super like spread out. Now all that we have to do is just compact it. So some of the ways that we can compact it is by getting rid of elements that are consistent with everything. So one of the ways that you can easily get rid of everything is get rid of this nether wart line. Now why would I do that? You need nether wart in every single potion, or at least most of the potions. Well, the reason that you get rid of it is because you need it in every single potion. So instead of having it trigger off of a specific button every single time that it's pressed, you can just have it so that nether wart will be triggered anyway. Does that make sense? So instead of having a, our, our thing start here, we can just put buttons right here. Let's grab some buttons. Still works exactly the same, we just got rid of the nether wart. And we'll have some other timing mechanism for allowing for the release of nether wart. So that's one really, really basic way to think about redstone logic. And from there you can build much more complicated logic gates and you can use different elements such as AND gates, NOR gates, and a bunch of different things. But in a sense, this is the essence of redstone. You're creating a logic matrix and each one of these matrixes will allow you to do something by triggering at either the right time or or something else so i have plenty of things i mean this is a new world unfortunately but i have plenty of things that are built around just this simple parameters of i need this to trigger this to trigger and this to trigger this can also this very simple way is logic gate is also used for creating door locks and that sort of thing. So I could say you need to press buttons in this specific order. And if it doesn't match that specific order, then you it doesn't trigger. I hope this was helpful to a few people in terms of how you can turn something very simple into something that could be complicated very, very easily and very, very quickly. I may continue to do a couple of redstone tutorials like this where I just break down the base components and try and put it together and eventually Maybe we will create something like a potion dispenser off of these in the most simple way that we possibly can. Alright, thank you for watching.